Hey everyone, Andy here at NAB 2016. I'm in the Airy booth talking to Mark Shipman Mueller, the uh, product manager for the Alexa line of cameras, the very popular Alexa cameras. So uh, this is the SXT. Here it is in person. Fantastic. So can you tell us what's been going on, what are the updates on the new line, uh, the new camera? Sure, sure. Um, yeah, we've introduced the SXT a while ago, but now we have some features. We're actually very close to shipping. I hope we're going to be shipping in June. All right. <laughs> um, but we'll first do the upgrades first to reward our loyal customers who've been buying XTs all along. Right. Now, we have some new features on the SXT here. First of all, we have some new recording formats. Mm -hmm. We take the old eight four recording formats from the XT, mm -hmm. but now we have four, uh, six new recording formats. Two we already announced, ProRes 2K UH, I'm sorry, ProRes 4K UHD and ProRes 4K Cine. Mm. And now there's four new ones. There are two recording formats where we record ProRes and we do the anamorphic de-squeeze in the camera. So it actually de-squeezes, it de-squeezes in the file, so you, the, fi the final results are already stretched back out appropriately. Final results, beautiful CinemaScope. Nice. And there's a ProRes 2K anamorphic and a ProRes 4K anamorphic. Wow. Then we have a open gate in ProRes. Mm -hmm. Previously that was only available in Airy Raw. Now you also have ProRes open gate. Wow. And we have a new one called Airy Raw 3.2K. Mm -hmm. Now most people have been shooting Airy Raw 2.8K. I think Airy Raw 3.2K is going to replace that because it's the largest sensor area that is still covered by our Super 35 lenses and we can reach out in 20 frames a second. This is the full, so it's bigger, it's the same as OpenGate then in it's terms slightly, of? OpenGate is 3.4K, 3.2 is slightly smaller, right. but has the advantage that most of our lenses cover 3.2. 3.4, not all lenses cover. Right. And if you're curious which lenses cover and which don't, we have the um, lens illumination guide on the internet where you can just take a look, you right. choose your lens, and then you'll see if it covers or not. That's great. So uh, what else is going on? So I know you have some amazing color management and out new outputs and you know yes. there's a lot of other interesting things going on here in this product. Yes, we do. We, yeah. we have a new look management implemented. So it's a completely new architecture in this camera. Yeah. We looked at everything people are doing in terms of looks and it's a little complicated right now. It's a little messy, so we try to simplify this. Mm -hmm. The new look management consists of three components. There's a new look file, every look file too. Mm -hmm. There is um, a software developer kit, so third parties can work with us. Mm -hmm. And then we have a free Mac tool called the Airy Color Tool. Mm -hmm. Now, there's four things you can do with this, four user advantages if you want. Number one, you can do high dynamic range monitoring. And that's actually as easy as choosing a file here. So on the main screen, you would go to the color menu, you go to the look file, and then there's a special look file, in this case for a 2020 monitor with a PQ curve at 1,000 nits. You choose that, and bingo, you're ready to monitor an HDR. Wow. So, so if you have an HDR monitor, you plug in, off you go. That's the idea, basically? That's the idea. It's wow. very, very simple. So that's, that's the first thing. Yeah. The second thing is you can do live grading on set. Oh. So you could just remotely, or how do you? Remotely, yeah. You can hook up a laptop to the camera. Yeah. There's a. Um, 3D LUT in the camera, there's a CDL in the camera, and the name of the target color space. Wow. And knowing all these things, you can then upload or download the 3D LUT, and you can live change the CDL values. And we're very happy that already a large number of companies are doing this. Pomford LiveGrade is doing this, um, Colorfront on set live, Codex live. Uh, there's a DP lights, right? Technicolor DP lights, which yeah. we also have here at the booth. Yeah. So they're all doing this, and that, that's really great. I think this is really the dream, is color is going right in the camera, we're controlling it, instead of having external boxes do all this work, the camera does the work, and it's, does it store the, the data on the file, like into the movie file? The yes, it does. Yeah. The, 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 all the look files, it becomes metadata. Mm -hmm. Any every raw file, any ProRes file, the SXT records has that metadata on it. And then if you go to do your dailies, the dailies programs, and there I'm really excited because all the people, who do, a lot of the people who do dailies software have already adopted this. Uh, Colorfront OSD, Resolve, Film Light Daylight, um, Pomfret Silverstack, they all adopted this. Nice. And so they can automatically put the same look that the DP and the director saw on the set into your dailies. Wow. But wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, know, for a free, you had a free set of Ginsu knives. <laughs> If you then go to editing, yeah. the big three editing programs, Avid Media Composer, Apple Final Cut Pro, and Adobe Premiere Pro, they also support our new look management. So the same look you saw in the dailies, the same look you saw on set, you now the editor also sees when they're editing. So it's really, it's an end-to-end, -end, very transparent, tight end-to-end -end look management. You can basically just bring the files in, the look is there, you can apply it or turn, turn it on or off and bring it away. It's pretty amazing, again, just the dream of this idea, right? I think this is pulling everything through, 
uh, it makes it seamless, which is totally key. That's the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So, so will it happen in other cameras? Can you tell us in the future? Well, the the, the Amira and the Mini it's already the support the same look file, and right. you can work with the same tool. Okay. The live grading and the um, automated dailies. We're going to include that in the next software upgrade with the Amira and the Mini, so all our cameras then have the same function. Wow, that's now, huge. Yeah, that's huge. there's one function though that only the Alexa has, yeah. which is we have four individual signal paths going through the camera. Ah. So we can give you four different outputs. Now, one of them is the viewfinder, and the other one is three monitor outs. That's, yeah, in order to demonstrate that, let's walk over there and I'll show you. Yeah. So here we have the viewfinder. So if the operator wants to see an image um, with a look file on, with a look file off, view uh, frame lines on, status image on, off, they can do that. Totally independent of everything else. Totally independent. And then we're assuming the camera assistant wants to see a Rec. 709 image with status information available here, including lens data information. Mm -hmm. But the DIT wants to see a clean log C awesome. signal with, no, with nothing on it, so they can get that. And let's say the director has a fancy new Rec. 2020 monitor and they only want to see the frame lines, you can set that. Yeah, so that's completely independent, which is a big problem on set often, is that everyone wants to see something different and we run out of outputs. And Exactly. Yeah. Yes, and we, we, I just had a DIT here yesterday yeah. with whom I talked two years ago, and she was complaining about all these things. Right. And when she saw this, she almost broke out in tears. <laughs> she was like, oh, this is great. You, you, you guys listen to us. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a huge thing. You remotely, that, that, that person could remotely control it, put the, put the lookup look up tables inside, and then route them where they want to. I mean, it's, again, it's definitely the dream of all of this. Yeah. Exactly. Um, last thing, maybe, we've already done some beta tests with the SXT that have gone very well. We had one in Hamburg at the, uh, the harbor where there actually was a hurricane on that day. So the crew really had trouble, but the camera did fine. <laughs> and we actually had one in Korea where they're shooting TV dramas with an SXT. And that's been going really, really well. We're in the last stages of you know, getting the software, testing the software, making sure we get all the bugs out. And then hopefully the camera will come out soon. We'll start doing the upgrades and people can use all these cool features on the set. Wow, this is great. Thank you so much for the, the time. It's a great update. Uh, we're looking forward to having it soon. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, Andy.